Dear colleagues, I'm really thrilled on what kind of data we have seen here in, in the field of kidney cancer today at ESMO 2025. And let me tell you, we've got four abstracts that are quite worthwhile watching. So let's start with the second line therapy um, in kidney cancer because we are lacking evidence and we do have guideline recommendations uh, for the second line spot that is basically um, existing on subgroup analysis and comes from real world data. So um, not very robust, I would say. So basically we recommend TKI treatment in those that have failed the previous IO combination, uh, but we don't have a preferred choice. Uh, I would say cabizantinib and Leniv are the, the ones that are being mainly used uh, uh, in the second line spot. Um, so the Lencarbo study looked into um, the efficacy of lenvetinib, everolimus as a combination versus cabizantinib. And uh, as it appeared, it showed better objective response rate, better progression-free survival. Uh, however, it came at the expense of additional toxicity for that specific combination. So I think it's quite informative because it, it's what we do in clinical, uh, in clinical reality. And now we have data to suggest that Leniv is, is more efficacious in, in this specific uh, set of, uh, of patients in second slash third line therapies. Uh, but it may not be attributable to every single patient because of the toxicity profile. So I think, I mean, how I use it in clinic is really, I use Leniv for patients that are in a more desperate need of, of response, are symptomatic or have a high tumor burden. And, and I reserve cabozantinib for the others that probably can get away with a less toxic regimen in order to control their disease. So let's speak about first-line treatment. And I think in the first-line treatment, we have uh, five, four or five different options that are being recommended or licensed in, in uh, the, the different regions of uh, Europe. And um, basically, we do recommend IO combinations as the first-line treatment option in kidney cancer patients. So one of the field that is, is associated with poor prognosis, poor outcome, more morbidities, um, is, is the section of patients um, that has a bone metastatic disease. And we always wonder, you know, whether there is a winning strategy for a given patient population and what is the best way forward. And I think we have seen different subgroups from different, uh, different uh, trials to report on this patient population. We have seen here at ESMO also a poster uh, from the CLEAR study that investigated lenvatinib and pembrolizumab versus sunitinib, and it, it reported on the efficacy on this specific subgroup of patients with bone metastatic disease. Basically, it showed the su superiority of lenpem versus sunitinib in this patient population, indicating that more intense therapy gets better outcome in this patient population that is also more morbid and has symptoms uh, from the disease. So once we have established um, the different uh, first-line TKI-IO combinations or IO-IO combinations, the question is really how to move the field forward. And so far, triplets have not been very successful. Um, in order to really develop the future first-line treatment option, um, on the basis of LANPEM as a, as a backbone, um, the Keymaker U33 study investigated whether the addition of different components really would help in order to improve outcomes. So basically, a number of different agents has been te tested uh, in that setting, um, but um, only one of the strategies really showed additional benefit. And that's the combination of LENPEM plus Belzudifen, a novel HIF inhibitor. Uh, and uh, what we have seen is an improvement uh, in progression-free survival uh, and durability of the responses, and also a survival, overall survival benefits. So whether that translates into phase three studies um, being positive, of course we don't know, but it's a very robust and good signal uh, to go and move forward towards this um, novel triplet combination. So while speaking about all these great, exciting um, advances in the field of kidney cancer, um, what, it moves the whole field towards um, multimodality treatment because it opens up that avenue where you can add metastatic directed therapies that could be ablative radiotherapies, uh, thermotherapies, local ones, or surgeries. So um, basically the aim in a subgroup of patients is really to, to render patients free of cancer with the treatment that we offer. And on top of the medical treatment, we add something. So in order to, to move along that avenue, you do have to have proper imaging 
And so far, PET imaging has not been very successful in kidney cancer, but with the advance of um, yeah, more specific, cancer-specific PET imaging tracers, such as the CA9 DPI PET scanning, we have seen that we can produce high-resolution pictures that are very specific uh, for, for the cancer that we, that we target uh, based on the CA9 expression in clear cell carcinoma. And um, those scans are really informative and may change how we uh, treat patients um, because you have a better distinction between those that are metastasis, metastatic and those that are oligometastatic. And, and that is a great distinctor in the clinic to have in order to pursue further multimodality treatments in cancer patients. So thank you for listening. I hope um, you had a good impression on, on developments in kidney cancer. Stay tuned.